Will it sink or will it float? We're going to learn how things sink or float, and you're going to get a chance to use what we learned along the way. As we guide children through exploration, we can be a partner to their play. And being a partner to their play means that we're ready to support and challenge them toward their discoveries. With our sink and float experiments, children will discover a sink and float through observation, identifying density, with hollow objects, the power of absorption, and surface tension. And I'll also share a challenge where children can use what they learned. Now here are some things to organize for your experiments. You'll need some things to test to see whether they sink or float, whether from around the house or outside. You'll also need a container of water, whether it be like a bin or maybe a sink. And also have a place where children can record their discoveries, predictions, whether something did sink or float, things they changed to make something sink or float. Now here are some examples of some things you can test to see whether they sink or float. Lemon, sink or float. Spatula, sink or float. Chalk, sink or float. Rubber ducky, sink or float. Metal spoon, sink or float. Bubble wand, sink or float. Toy goat, sink or float. Let's start off by looking at what does it look like when something sinks or floats? Metal spatula. It went to the bottom of the water. When something sinks, it goes to the bottom of the water. Foam block. The foam block stayed on top of the water. That means it floats. So things that float stay on top of the water. Things that sink go to the bottom of the water. We can also define this by an object's density. Now that's looking at an object's molecules, and that's more than what we can see just by looking at it. An object's density is how close its molecules are in a particular space or shape. And when you compare it to water, if an object is denser than water, it sinks, like the metal spatula. If it's less dense than water, it floats, like the foam block. And the more we know about an object's density, the more we can learn how to make something sink or float. Okay, let's try a rock. Sink or float. It sank. That means it's denser than water. Water bottle. Sink or float. It stayed on top. It's less dense than water. And that brings us to our next sink and float discovery. The water bottle is hollow. And that hollow space is filled with air. And air is less dense than water. So we know that if you have something that's hollow and it's filled with air, it helps an object float. So think about the things that you're going to be testing. Are they hollow? Are they hollow enough to make it float? Next up, a toy goat. Sink or float? Sink. Eraser. Sink or float? Sink. Paper. Sink or float? It floats. Now let's watch the paper just a little bit longer. Can you see that? The paper is now sinking into the water. But why is it sinking? Well, that's our next sink and float discovery. The paper is absorbing water. And as it absorbs water, it becomes denser. As it becomes denser, it goes from floating to sinking. So the things that absorb water can actually get more dense. Okay, let's try two different kinds of spoons. One plastic spoon and a metal spoon. Let's see which one sinks and which one floats. The plastic spoon. It floats. The metal spoon. It sinks. So we, we see that the plastic spoon is less dense, so it floats, and the metal spoon is more dense or denser, so it sinks. So we know that metal always sinks. Does it? Okay, so let's try out some more metal things. I have a paper clip and some aluminum foil. Let's see which one sinks and which one floats. The paper clip. It sank. The aluminum foil. 
it floats. So we know that metal things don't just sink, and that takes us to our next sink and float discovery. Water surface tension. When you put something in the water, the water pushes back. And that's its surface tension pushing back on the object, especially the more that object is touching the water. So the paperclip, which is very thin, is barely touching the water. Along with the fact that it's denser than water, it sank. The aluminum foil is touching a lot of the water, so it's using a lot of surface tension to keep it afloat. Here's a challenge where kids can apply what they learned. Once they figured out the things that would sink and the things that would float, have them go back and try to make the opposite happen. For things that sank, see if they can make it float. And for the things that floated, see if they can make them sink. And apply the things they learned about the things that were less dense than water or denser than water or surface tension. For example, the water bottle floats because there's air inside and the air is less dense than water, so it helps the water bottle float. But how can we make it sink? You can put something else inside, something different, something like uh, sand or water or paper, and see if that makes it sink and they can do their problem solving on all the different items to try to make them sink or float. We'd love to see the different ways they try to make things sink or float, so post a photo or video on social media with the hashtag LearnWithLakeshore. I hope you enjoyed this learning at home video. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Lakeshore Learning Channel to see more. Until next time, keep on learning. Keep watching our learning at home videos, plus visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.